This is a bomb-proof Raspberry Pi. No, really. Well, I guess it's technically explosion-proof, but still, there are industrial Raspberry Pi computers out there built to run in some of the most toxic and explosive environments on Earth. And it's a good thing it's explosion-proof, because I just found out there's also a bomb powered by a Raspberry Pi now. But I'm not in the military, so I probably won't get to test that. In this video, I'm going to focus on something most people don't ever get to see — industrial Raspberry Pi computers. Specifically, computers built with the tiny Compute Module 4, which is this thing. There's a whole computer on this tiny board, and it can do things like power robots, automate your home, or heck, if you watched my video last week, even run displays like the ones you see in a shopping mall. This thing is so tiny, so powerful, and so efficient, it's no wonder it's out of stock everywhere. The CM4 has sparked a revolution in embedded computing. I'm going to focus on three industrial Pi computers in this video — the Lincoln Bins CM4 Box Pro, the Factor 201, and the explosion-proof Milu X Industrial Edge Gateway. Also, I'm giving away this Pi Box with a Compute Module 4 inside, and those aren't easy to find right now. Watch to the end of this video to see how to enter. Before we dive in, industrial Pis cost a lot. Well, at least in comparison to the $35 base Pi Model B. And sure, these things include an enclosure and power adapters, and those cost money, but the industrial Pis are usually part of an ecosystem. And they have a bunch of different mounting options, like DIN rail, Visa, or even rack mounting. They also usually have more documentation, better support, and sometimes even specialized industry certifications. Like, if you work at an oil refinery, you can't just grab a Raspberry Pi and duct tape it to the wall. That's why these things exist. And that's why the prices can sometimes be eye-watering. You're not just paying for a Raspberry Pi. Heck, you're not really just paying for the hardware. You're buying into industrial computing, which comes with a different level of reliability, testing, and support. Getting right into it, Lincoln Bins specializes in electronic enclosures. They shipped this box to me, and all the parts inside are built around their new Pi Head CM4 carrier board. The carrier board has a half-height M.2 NVMe slot for SSDs. It has a push button for power control, it has HDMI, USB 2, gigabit Ethernet, camera and display connectors, and headers for power, serial bus, and control. The board is part of a whole set of different enclosures, including this CM4 Box Pro that can be put on a Visa mount, DIN rail, surface mount, or even be racked up three across in a 1U rack mount unit. They also sent the Pro Plus, which is made for desktop use, with labels for all the ports and a little simpler case. There's even a Eurocard model. Heck, if Deadmau5 ever wanted to stick some Raspberry Pis in his massive music production Euro rack, this thing would let him install hundreds of them. You can fit 10 in a half rack or 20 in a full width rack. Not quite as many in a 19 inch rack as the CM4 Blade I showed last year, but these can be packed pretty dense. All their kits center around the Pi Head carrier board, and it has a lot of heat sinks built into it, including this sexy looking aluminum IoT heat sink for the Pi. Lincoln Bins makes some other enclosures, like for the Pi 3, Pi 4, and Tinkerboard too. I asked them what makes a Pi industrial, and they told me they see five main differences. They usually run custom software for a particular use. They're usually mounted using some sort of industry standard. They have to be made reliable, they often run in harsh environments, and finally, they usually cost more since designers have to build them to be more reliable and fit in those custom enclosures. Normal Raspberry Pis aren't great for that, especially for mounting. The Raspberry Pi 4 Model B has ports along two different sides, making it hard to integrate into standard mounts like rack mounts, DIN rails, and Euro rack. Also, the Pi's built-in power circuit isn't ideal for powering other devices, especially if they require a lot of current. So when a company like Lincoln Bins designs a custom CM4 carrier, they can add in more reliable power supplies that deal with heat and power distribution better. Also, the support you get from industrial vendors is usually better, and that's another big reason for the added cost. You can usually get a human being on the other end of an email or phone call, and you can often get replacement parts shipped within days. I actually had a problem with the DIN rail mount that was included in my kit, and a couple days after I told Lincoln Bins about it, a replacement showed up in the mail. Now, Lincoln Bins makes full Pi computers, but they really specialize in custom enclosures. OnLogic is on the other side of the same coin. They have custom enclosures, but they focus more on the actual computers than the cases they come in. They sell options from this Factor 201, a Raspberry Pi-based computer built for harsh conditions, all the way up to full-fledged rugged PCs with 12th-gen Intel CPUs. 
When they first contacted me, I asked them, what do people generally use these kinds of computers for? And they told me things like RFID tool tracking at manufacturing plants, solar panel and HVAC controls, sensor monitoring, and digital signage. The Pi is perfect for that because it uses a lot less space and power than traditional industrial PCs while still having enough RAM and processing power. OnLogic is also working on a Factor 202 with a touchscreen and a lot more I.O., but these Factor computers have a lot going for them, starting with the case. It's DIN and wall mountable. It has metal plates for heat dissipation on both sides and some easy to read LEDs on the front. It's got USB 2 and USB 3 ports on the top, along with full-size HDMI and USB-C for flashing. There are also four antenna cutouts in case you want to install 4G or 5G wireless inside, and it came with this Wi-Fi antenna. On the bottom, there's a PoE-capable gigabit Ethernet port, a second Ethernet port, a terminal block for serial communication, and a three-pin terminal block for power. If I unscrew the cover, you can see inside it comes with a SATA M.2 SSD, in this case a 128GB model from Transcend, and it has a separate B key slot for 4G or 5G modems. The second Ethernet port uses a real Technic off the USB 3 bus, and that's how this unit has so many different expansion options, from that external USB 3 port, to an extra gigabit port, and the two internal M.2 slots. And heck, they even heatsinked the SSD controller so you don't have to worry about it overheating. In my basic thermal test, the SSD side barely warmed up. That hotspot is actually the reflection from the label. The other side has the CM4, so it does get a little hotter, but it's still able to keep the Pi running across a wide range of temperatures from negative 20 to 60 degrees Celsius, according to the spec sheet. And when I pull off the backside, you can see they're even cooling the Pi's power circuit and one of the board's power circuits using that side's metal plate. This little PCB has a ton of chips on it, providing all the different features through the Pi's single PCI Express lane, but everything I tested worked great. And putting it back together was really easy. OnLogic even has a detailed step-by-step -step guide on their website. I screwed in the DIN rail mount and powered it up, and everything worked well through either LAN port or over Wi-Fi. They also sell a PoE kit for the Factor 2 on, and in fact, I tested it with my industrial DIN rail PoE switch, and it won't power on without that installed. The price is a little steep, but that's a theme here. Part of the reason is the design process and certifications industrial computers like the Factor 201 have to go through. I mean, look at this list on their website. It's certified for EMC for scientific, medical, and maritime equipment. It has safety and wireless certifications. All those certifications, especially across different countries, take time and sometimes lots of money. But it shows in the end product. I mean, they don't just stick EMF shielding on certain parts of this thing for fun. This thing is built to live in places where there might be sensitive measurement equipment, and it has to run without causing interference or breaking because of interference. I think the Factor 201 is one of the best examples I've seen of the Compute Module 4 being used to its full potential. If the Pi had more I.O., it could go even further with things like faster Ethernet, faster SSD speeds, and no bus contention for USB 3 and cellular modems. But as it is, for a lot of industrial needs, this thing's a great fit. It sips 5 to 7 watts max and only takes up a tiny bit of room compared to other industrial PCs, meaning it can be deployed in more places and is truly an edge IoT device. But the CM4 Box Pro and the Factor 201 are both generic computers. They're meant to work in a wide variety of environments. The bomb-proof Pi? It's designed for one single purpose, to provide efficient, compact edge computing while not causing an explosion. The Pi I'm talking about is the Milu X, and I spoke with its designer, Matthew Smith. So my name's Matthew Smith. I'm originally from South Africa, but I've been based in France for 22 years. He started a company called FieldCloud, and they specialize in edge computing for industrial customers. He said when he started out, they integrated industrial grade PCs into rack mount cabinets. It was a nightmare trying to lug everything to remote locations like Angola in Central Africa. Their customers wanted the same amount of computing power, but they wanted it to take up less space and use way less energy. So in 2012, they started building ARM computers that were way smaller and used a lot less power. But what we did is we engineered a um, very compact, very robust edge computing gateway system. Basically, we took bits that were found in routers, we took bits that were found in network um, attached storage appliances, and also some low power ARM9 based uh, 
semi-embedded system on chip um, you know, technology and put that into a box. We call that the NS box. That was around 2012 when the first Raspberry Pi came out. Its chip wasn't very fast and it didn't have much RAM and it couldn't even run 64-bit applications, but it was great for hobbyists and learning. But when the Pi 3 came out, it could finally support those 64-bit applications FieldCloud had to run. But the mounting options for the SODIMM Compute Model 3 were limited in terms of heatsink design. Also, the storage bandwidth was a major concern because of the databases they needed to run on these things. They started building prototypes with the Raspberry Pi 3 and 4, but the Compute Model 4 changed everything. We actually designed a prototype board around the Pi 4, thinking that we would take that into uh, our, our customers' environments. And the, Pi, the Compute Module 4 was, in, was, was announced, and we said, okay, we're, we're going to scrap that design and go for a Pi, uh, Compute Module 4. So anyway, with, with all the fanfare that this thing deserves, right, and I've actually got the box open, but this is what we call Milu X, which is our carrier board, our custom carrier. Um, you don't see the Compute Module 4. And there's a very important reason why you don't see it. Right, it's not facing up at you. And that's because it is mated to a... Uh, custom milled aluminium heat sink, which then is then bon uh, connected or mated to the chassis. So, so basically, actually, that whole thing is a giant heat sink. It is a giant heat sink, but it is also allows this to be explosion proof. And it might not be intuitive, but it's actually explosion proof to prevent an explosion inside the box from getting out. Though it'll do pretty good preventing damage from outside too. But Matthew said electrical sparks are one of the most common sources of ignition in industrial environments. And that can happen from something as simple as a person touching the wrong part of the pie board. And the air is highly combustible in places like oil refineries, pharmaceutical plants, flour mills, and mines. So in the case of this Milu X, an important part of being explosion proof is actually the threads on the cover. Basically, if there's an explosion, right, I've got a release of pressure, and this pressure is going to have to go out somewhere, right? And the actual um, thread on that particular cover is actually going to slow down the release of that pressure. And so it's going to reduce its energy, which means that it's no longer hazardous on the outside. The way they get signals in and out of the box is also important. Cable glands, these things on the bottom of the enclosure, protect the pie physically and electrically. Basically, we've got a number of cable glands, and we've also got two very special... They, 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 they look cool. If you, if you ever watch <laughs> Doctor Who, this probably reminds you of a Dalek's, you know, protrusion. But these are explosion-proof, intrinsically safe Ethernet couplers. They're made by a partner of ours, a company in Italy called Solexi Wireless. So we basically have a connector. This is just a standard M12 connector, which is used a lot for industrial Ethernet and Profinet. And um, there's a number of different types of coding schemes. The coding scheme we use uh, is for 10, 100 megabit Ethernet. There are coding schemes for gigabit Ethernet. But inside this is resin and protection circuits with Zener diodes that basically limit the current and the risk of, again, electrical signals going in. So this, this, this deals with the ingress risk of having, for example, overcurrent that could cause a circuit on our board to explode. Or it also um, protects, if I have a fault, an electrical fault on my board, it will not actually go out of this coupler. It'll be, it'll be quenched inside the coupler. Even tiny details like the RTC battery are different than what you might see on other Pi boards. So uh, that green guy here on that side there, mm -hmm. that is the battery. And so that battery is rated and can work up to 125 degrees centigrade. That's a little bit uh, better rating than the little coin cell batteries. Correct. So we have to run that with a derating safety factor in order to, again, certify that this equipment can work up to plus 75 degrees centigrade. But the physical enclosure isn't the only thing that makes this board better for industrial use. 
Repairs can be costly and take time, so they run a database off two M.2 SSDs in RAID 1 and put an LTE modem in another M.2 slot. They also have a separate Wi-Fi card for a local access point, so technicians can wirelessly connect to the Pi and check on the data. I asked Matthew about cost, and I'm pretty sure it's a case of, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. I think a lot of people, some people who are you know, angry that they can't buy their Raspberry Pi and they blame it on industry or something, they're like, oh, they just want these cheap computers, but it doesn't seem to be about that. And what, like, when you build this thing, what kind of price does it end up being? Like, oh, no, that's a trade secret. I mean, you know, you'd probably fall off your chair if I told you I'm uh, sort of the, num the, the numbers. But, you know, if we go through all that is required to actually deploy in or integrate in, it's not really the deployment, it's the integration part, because these kinds of systems get fitted into a pretty complex chassis. Um, uh, you know, so there's mechanical integration, there's electrical integration, there's safety standards that we have to follow. What, what, in the explosion-proof world, what carries a cost, or um, and again, it's not a cost you can avoid, is safety and quality. And a lot of that cost comes in through third-party certification. Just like with OnLogic and their interference certifications, products like the Milu X can't be used unless they pass certain standards like IECEX. And building to those standards and doing all the required testing costs money. So in the end, the price of these industrial products is a lot less about the hardware, the Pi inside, and more about the whole product from build to testing to integration and ongoing support. But why use a Raspberry Pi specifically? Why did the Pi take embedded computing by storm when literally there are hundreds of other ARM boards and SOCs out there? Yeah. We're talking about systems which would normally sell for at least half a million dollars each, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of pieces and components that go into that. The cost SG isn't in sourcing the hardware. So to get caught up on a $35 computer, right, it kind of misses the point. But I'll say this about Raspberry Pi, it's not about the $35 price tag, it's actually about the community that surrounds it, the quality of the community that supports, for example, porting the kernel, manage, uh, maintaining the kernel, maintaining, uh, again, all of the software components that can go into a full operating system. And that's probably the biggest benefit that we've got, is that we're part of this broader community, and we all are sharing little bits of that cost. If we were doing it alone, and this is a big difference, and which is why Raspberry Pi ended up being a game changer and a category changer, is in the old days of embedded computing, if we looked at ARM9 system on chips, each manufacturer and each generation and each model within a generation required a specific board support package, a BSP. That echoes my experience. There are diehard users who will get things working on a specific board, and there are awesome projects like Armbian that make a ton of different boards useful. But embedded chips from Rockchip, Hardkernel, Marvell, and others are often one and done or require huge amounts of investment just to get support. Hopefully we get more options with the same level of support the compute module has, but right now it's hugely popular for low power edge computing. You know what else is hugely popular? This video's sponsor, the Pybox. Pybox is a tiny Pi storage server based on the Compute Module 4. This new solid metal enclosure is a huge improvement over the 3D printed enclosure I used in my video on it last year, and it can hold two SSDs inside. Pybox also runs CubeSale, a Kubernetes-based self-hosting service that puts you in charge of your data. It gives you remote access, easy backups, and even an app store so you can install whatever you need on your Pi-powered home lab. Go to this link to enter to win this Pybox, which includes a CM4 with 8 gigs of RAM. But if you don't win, CubeSale is still selling Pyboxes with Raspberry Pis, if you can believe that or not. Check out the Pybox at pybox.io, and until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling.